time already? Crikey, doesn't time fly? Well, as you can see, I've got my tree up and it does shed the needles. Despite the fact that it's made of plastic, every year I get this tree out and assemble it and it takes a long time. It always sheds a little bit. So I'm hoping in about 50, 60 years, it will have shed enough for me to justify buying a new one. But yeah, it's so, I did it a couple of days ago. I've put the tree up, but that take, took me about an hour just to do the tree because it's not one of those easy quick ones. Every branch, apart from the very top part of the tree, every other branch is individual. And obviously to store them away, I have to flat, flatten them. So every branch has to be opened out and titivated and then placed on the tree. So before I start decorating, I've got to do the lights first. That's always the first thing to do, the lights. I need to open five more windows on my advent calendars, don't I? So I'll do that first and hopefully, fingers crossed, tomorrow during the advent series, you'll see this tree fully decorated. I can't believe it's only day nine of this advent series. I feel like I've been doing it for weeks, but it's not even been two weeks yet, has it? And I'm not even feeling Christmassy. I've been wearing Christmas jumpers. I've been listening to Christmas tunes. And no, I haven't got the feeling, not yet anyway. Perhaps once the tree is decorated with all its bling and I've dotted the other decorations around the house, then maybe when I've got time to sit down, <laughs> I might feel a bit more Christmassy. I'm not sitting like this to be cool. I'm sitting like this for two reasons. One, it uh, obscures the belly. And two, I can't crouch anymore. It, my feet go to sleep and it hurts. So this is slightly more comfortable. But anyway, enough of me posing. Let's open another door of all these advent calendars. Chocolate time first, I think. I've had my lunch, so it's time for dessert. So is it number nine? I think it is, yes. I just, <laughs> for some reason, the song Clementine, oh Clementine came into my head. Didn't she wear number nine shoes? That's another odd song. If you really think about it. Her shoes were number, her shoe, was it her shoes were number nine? Or size nine? Because if she wore size nine shoes, I think Clementine may have been a cross dresser perhaps. I don't know. Right, well, while we contemplate what Clementine, Cl Clementine was or is, let's read today's ditty. All is calm, all is brighter with chocolate. Well, I'm not sure about that. Unless the chocolate is laced with some drugs, but I don't think these are. I don't think they'd be allowed to be sold in John Lewis if they, if they had. Oh, crikey. Oh, 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 I think this is going to be exciting because this, this is a chocolate shape I've not shown you before. Get ready for this, folks. <gasps> Look. Da, 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 da. It's Angel. It's Angel Gabriel. I have come with great joy. Oh, you're melting on my fingers, Angel Gabriel. Well, there's only one place you're going to fly to, and that's inside my mouth. Goodbye, cool world. It's the boring educational part of the video when we visit the British Isles at Christmas. I was just thinking about it, looking at all the locations I've shown you so far. I have actually been to quite a few of them. Well, actually, not that many. Hmm. I haven't been to the Eden Project. I've been to Stonehenge. Enge? Henge? Roger, where's your diction? I've been to Stonehenge. I have been to Wales, but not South Wales. I haven't been to the Sandringham Estate, I suppose. I've been to Blackpool. I've been to Edinburgh. Oh, actually, I haven't been to very many places at all. But one place I can safely say I have been, and in fact, worked and lived for many, many years, is the city of York. And York has a magnificent minster, or as the tourists would say, where's the cathedral? I used to tell them, not pointing out, it's not a cathedral, it's a minster. But I didn't even know what the difference was. 
Google it, I'm sure it'll tell you. Here's York, higher up than I thought. Or is it? No, I'm probably looking at the wrong. <laughs> it's probably there. It's No, it's not there. That's Newcastle. No, that's Newcastle. I thought, I thought that was wrong. York is here at number nine because, of course, we're doing day nine. That would have been a clue, Roger. Yes, here is York where I lived, well, just outside York in a little village called Bishop Thorpe where I lived with my mum and dad and then latterly just my mum and the dogs and lots and lots and lots and lots of vacuum cleaners and I do still miss that house in Bishop Thorpe but my mum had to move on she lives in a nice house but I still miss the house in Ramsey Avenue there's York Minster anyway let's see what it says about York Minster so here we go, number nine, York Minster. The current Gothic building of York Minster was completed in 1472 and took over 240 years to build. Its famous rose window commemorates the end of the War of the Roses between the houses of York and Lancaster. Well, if you remember in yesterday's Lego Advent calendar, day number eight, I opened these up and couldn't really decide what they were. And I thought they could be planters with a single flower in them. It didn't really make much sense, especially this sort of wedge-shaped thing. But uh, Jack Trainer, shout out to Jack Trainer. He's been asking for a shout out, so today you get one, Jack. He suggested that these are Christmas presents, which would make a lot more sense in a Christmas Advent calendar than planters with flowers in. And I suppose what looks like flowers on the top could be bows or some sort of decoration on a Christmas parcel. So yes, top marks to Jack. I think you are correct there. These are Christmas presents. Okay, well that's that mystery solved. Let's have a look what's behind window number nine. And here it is, window or door. Doesn't really matter, does it? They both open. I think we'll have to move the Christmas tree out of the way. And there's a man, you can't see him, but the man with his chopper, he might get in the way. So you go there, he's still chopping the wood and the little boy with the cookie hasn't given him a bite. Right, well, I, I wouldn't either, I'd eat the cookie myself. So here we go, number nine. <gasps> oh, well, there's no doubting what number nine is, is there? Doesn't look much like a snowman at the moment, but a quick assembly later and we'll have a snowman to join our Christmassy winter scene. And here he is, Frosty the snowman, wearing a red scarf and a top hat, twigs for arms, but no face. Lego couldn't be bothered to give him a button nose or even a carrot nose and he can't see and with no mouth he can't speak so we have unfortunately and no ears so this poor frosty is deaf blind and mute like most snowmen really unless they're from fantasy world but there he is and lego again have provided some extra parts we have a spare neck scarf and a spare arm in case he loses one. I don't know if we can stick the arm anywhere. There's no other hole. We can't give him a big long nose, can we, with using that stick? But anyway, they are spare. Plus, we could all burn it, couldn't we? We could burn it. Burn that on the fire in case we run out of fuel. So, well, that can be the winter fuel that somebody's gathering. Gathering winter fuel. Oh well, what, what, what carol's that from? Good King Wenceslas. Oh yes, that ties in with East Grinstead, where I used to live, because it was written that carol. Another little Christmas fact for you: the carol "Good King Wenceslas" was written in East Grinstead. Yes, it is true. Okay, well, quite exciting today. Definitely know what that is. Can't wait to see what's behind window or door number 10 tomorrow. 
Time for my favourite opening, the Yankee Candle Advent Calendar. Doesn't that look Christmassy? Looks lovely. Right. I can't even remember what I opened yesterday, so I won't even comment on it. Ah, oh, there's number nine, just down there. And the size of the window or door indicates that we have a tea light waiting for us. Right, I have cut my nails, so I am still managing to get into these things. Uh, it's just, there we go. Oh, whew. it's hard work this. So, we have a very, very lovely red Christmassy tea light. I think that could be the cranberry ice. I'll just double check the back of the box. I can confirm that this tea light is the cranberry ice fragrance and it's the last time you'll see this because you only get two of this fragrance in the Yankee Candle advent calendar so you won't be seeing that again I'll be burning this at a later date as soon as my trees up I'll probably light one of the pine fragranced either the tea light or the votive candle that I unboxed earlier in the advent series okay Time for the final advent calendar for today. It's the RC helicopter. If you've been watching all these videos, you may remember that we couldn't find number seven. Now, a couple of people, Patrick and Audrey Forbes Hamilton, have claimed to have seen seven. Well, I've scoured this from top to bottom and I cannot see a number seven. Now, Audrey said it was in the top right hand corner on a snowy branch well let's look shall we i think possibly audrey what you've seen and what patrick may have seen was it here if it was you can comment below that's 17 not seven i'm just trying to let's hold it i'll just have another look i just think it wasn't printed at all on the box it's it's not there no i can't no no so i think that's what you've seen audrey 17 there because if you remember i actually got got the part out of there and there's definitely nothing printed on that so i think that's possibly what you've seen but good you know good try if any of you can spot where seven is please tell me because i really don't think obviously it's easier for me to see because i'm right here and i did look at it very closely and i do think it's just was supposed to be printed on that part there and it wasn't anyway that's that uh, <laughs> mystery solved now we're on to day number nine aren't we so right let's oh, well that was easy enough i found it straight away no trouble there's number nine so what delights await us behind window number nine Aha. why do I keep forgetting the scissors well I didn't need them this time hopefully there we are that's that out well I think we know what that is and where that's going but we can never assume anything in the world of advent calendars so I am going to open up the other window to see the instructions for number nine and yes of course well we knew it was a rotor blade and it goes opposite the one that I've already fitted well I've managed to locate the screw oops and gently tighten it up onto the opposite rotor blade is that correct I'm assuming this is this is you know they are moving about like that I'm sure in a real helicopter they don't do that but I'm hoping when it when it's I'm not sure if that is correct actually well if it doesn't fly we'll know but I can't really tighten it any further they do seem to swivel unless they do need to I'm I'll just try tightening tightening it a little bit more but I'm, I'm wary of breaking something. Now, even even tightening it as much as I can, 
they still move freely so I'm assuming that they should move like that okay well as you can see it is really really starting to look like the helicopter so it'll be very interesting to see on Christmas Eve when I unveil the final part if this actually flies uh, it's 50 50 at the moment I'm not sure but that will be an exciting video, won't it? Well, I'll be excited anyway. Well, that's the end of today's video. Tomorrow you should see the tree behind me fully dressed with all its bling, all its lights, all its ornaments looking a lot more Christmassy. We've got the bear tree today, but I'm going to be very busy. I'm going to have myself a nice cup of coffee, pop on a Christmas movie on the TV, and get this tree decorated. It's gonna take me at least two hours, I would imagine, to do it. I have an awful lot of decorations. So, I'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.